the next session is by mr sen john providence he is an rxca that's red that certified architect and an rxci red that certified instructor is the team team lead with linux division and ipsr solutions limited he will be covering the topic on introduction to containers kubernetes and open shift with a demonstration of it a uh, few things about mr sen john Mr. Sen John Providence has 14 plus years experience in the IT industry and has worked in India and abroad. He completed his MSc in Computer Networking from London Metropolitan University and Bachelor in Computer Applications from Bangalore University. Currently, he is the team lead of the Linux Training Division of IPSR. He is a Red Hat Certified Architect and also Red Hat Certified Instructor. His ex expertise in cloud computing, Ansible containers, and OpenShift. Makes him a popular faculty development trainer and corporate trainer. That's a few uh, description about uh, Saint John. Over to you, Saint. Thank you, Sijin. Good afternoon, all, and welcome to this session on uh, introduction to containers, Kubernetes, and Red Hat OpenShift. Uh, we are going to uh, discuss about different methods of application deployment. So these containers, Kubernetes, and uh, OpenShift is all about uh, application deployment. So I'm going to, first I'm going to compare different mechanisms for application deployment. Yeah. Okay, if you look into this picture, you can see different methods of deployment. The first one is bare metal. So there is a traditional method so you have a physical server. On top of that, you have an operating system into that physical server, and we are running multiple applications onto that. Okay, we know that this is scenario. Like a normal system, uh, we install the operating system and we uh, install multiple applications into that operating system. I'm not talking about the challenges with this scenario. For example, for example, consider a Python application that requires access to common shared library that implements the TLS protocol. So traditionally, a system administrator installs the required package that provides the shared library before installing the Python application. But the main drawback to traditionally deployed software application is application depends on the runtime environment. update any patch updation to this app one, because of that patch, if I update to the operating system, the app one will run uh, without any trouble, but that may affect app two and app three. So that means we need the isolation of applications. So we need the app one get isolated from other applications and also isolate get isolated from the operating system. So in second scenario, we get that isolation by running a hypervisor in a virtual environment, hypervisor environment on top of that guest operating system, and we can separate any one of the application with a separate virtual machine. We got the solution, but the problem here it is cost. Just for isolating the applications we are running and additional resources, uh, like uh, which is used for running an uh, operating system. So that is virtualized environment. But if you consider containerized environment, our objective is to get the application isolated. We get the feature like application isolated here, like application one, application two, and application three. These are isolated from each other, and also it is not uh, the, any updates to the host operating system is not going to affect any one of these applications running on top of that host operating system. So you can see there is a new thing. Instead of hypervisor, there is a concept called container engine here. Container engine. So this engine will make sure that this application will run uh, without any any problem related to the host operating system. So this is what we are going to discuss in the coming slides. So I'm going to give you some demonstration based on containerization. And finally, the open shift. Of course, you can uh, containerize your applications 
on a virtualized environment like in aws uh, your aws instances can act as our physical uh, i mean virtual servers on top of that hyper system then hypervisors uh, then applications etc okay now moving to the next slide so what is container so a container is a set of one or more processes that are isolated from the rest of the system so if you look into this picture application a can be a, a web server b can be a, a sql server c can be another application but these all are isolated because of this containerization so here another word called docker docker is a container engine docker portman yeah, cryo there are different varieties of container engines available in the market so this will be implemented on top of a host operating system it depends on different uh, container engines there are different varieties of uh, specially designed host operating system for containerization okay so i'm going to take an example of a container engine called portman so before going into the demonstration i will explain what this portman will do like a, a operating system image or virtualization machine image we need image to create containers so container is nothing but an application runtime so in in user perspective container is a application but in a system perspective this is a, a process a running uh, in inside the system so for for creating containers we need images as I, does, as I said, just like a ISO image or virtual image, we need image, but compared to ISO image or a virtualized station images, this is lightweight. Compared to the normal ISO image, images, this is very lightweight, lightweight, and it is faster uh, in the case of deployment. So the portman will manage the life cycle of these containers, like creating containers, restarting containers, stopping containers, deleting containers, etc. In order to store the images, we have different methods, but the recommended method is keep that images in the image registry. There are publicly a number of uh, image registries are available that can be a public or private, depends on our requirement. So using the portman, we can download the image from an image registry to the local system. Okay, then using that image, will create contain multiple containers that is nothing but application runtimes on top of our host I mean operating system kernel so first i will show you the demonstration of containerization then moving forward we'll see the uh, explanation about kubernetes and openshift with the demonstration so for portman demonstration creating containers using portman i'm going to access my AWS instance, there I already installed a package called Portman. So Portman is one of the container runtime. So using this command, I'm just checking if any containers are running there. This uh, shows that there's no container running there, but I'm going to create a container using an image. An image is already downloaded from the registry, just to say the time, I already downloaded. So I have three different varieties of uh, images for uh, Apache web server. So I'm going to create a, 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 a new container using this command. Portman. So this is the command to create a container. Portman run. Then you can give a name. And I'm going to run in, in the background. Okay, I think I have the code here. Okay, this is the command portman run minus D means running the background with the port forwarding in order to access that web application. We need a port forwarding, something like that. So 8082 port in uh, in this host and 80, which is listening inside the container, 
And this is the image we have already downloaded, Docker IO, CentOS, HTTPD. Okay, I'm creating that container. Okay, that is created within a fraction of a second. So now I'm going to check the status of that container using sudo podman ps. Yes, that is running and listening in uh, 802 in our local host to 80 in the container. So how to get inside the container? I can use portman because I need to customize the index.html file so that uh, I, I, I can give my own where into that index.html file. So in order to get inside the container, I'm going to use portman ex command with the interactive terminal that is IT. Interactive term, the name of the container that is web. I, I gave them, okay, sorry. I didn't give any name, right? So I use the container ID. I'm accessing with the bash. Okay. Index.html. Yeah, there, there is no file named index.html, so I'm, I need to create that file. So using echo command, I'm going to create that. Welcome to IBSR. And I'm redirect, redirecting this to index.html. Okay, so I exit from the container. I'm going to curl. Here I can use localhost with port number eight two. see welcome to IPSA here. In order to access externally, I should get the public IP of my system because from the system I have figured an add to the container. So I'm fetching the public IP of control node. Yeah, just a minute. Okay, so this is the public IP. So through this public IP, I can access my web page externally. So I'm just copying paste into my tab. Okay, after that, I have to mention the port number 828082. So, this is welcome to IPSA. So, this you can try in your system also. I am pasting the chat box. This IP address with port number because first time I forgot to mention the port number because there are multiple web servers are listening in my system. But I should make sure that. I'm pointing to the correct port number. So if you go back to here, 8082 here. Because by default, this machine is listening for some other port number. But in order to get this specific web server, I need to use 8082. Okay, so this is an introduction to container, but our main topic is what is OpenShift. So I'm going into that. Before that, we need to find out the limitations of containers. So there are limitations. For example, now this container is running. I can see that it's running, but what will happen if I stop this container? So, so in short, I can say there is no high availability and there is no auto scaling, which means if, 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 if thousands of customers are accessing this web server, there is no load balance running there. I can, but I have to do it manually. Second thing is, uh, we cannot predict how many users are going to access tomorrow. So we need a automatic scaling mechanism. So this too is not comes with. So that's what I'm going to discuss next. The limitations of containerization. There are advantages, but there are some limitations. So when using with the containers in a production environment or enterprise, often require easy communication between large number of services. Here we discussed only one service web services. There are via n number of services running in the production environment. Second point, resource limits on application regardless of the number of containers running them. And 
respond to application usage spikes to increase or decrease running containers. So that is something like uh, load balancing and uh, auto scaling. So enterprise require a container orchestration technology for automatically managing uh, or automatically maintaining the highly available high, high available cluster or high available applications and also how we can automatically manage the scaling out and scaling in. So the container runtimes such as Portman do not adequately address the above requirement. So we need an orchestration engine. So this is just a summary about without container orchestrations, what is the scenario? Scaling of services we can, but manual work increases. We can do, but manual work increases. We can fix the crashing nodes, but manual work increases. Complexity for running new stuff in production increases. Human cost for running services increases. Scaling becomes more and more difficult. Public cloud providers build more and more expensive. So we can manage just with the containerization, but these are the scenarios. We need an orchestration engine. So Kubernetes is nothing but one of the or container orchestration engine. So if you look into this picture, Kubernetes help you to deploy applications with multiple replicas. So multiple replicas in the sense, if any one of the application uh, crashes or stops, other uh, n number of ports are running in the background to help that application. So I'm, I'm going to show you that demonstration in OpenShift, how to increase the replica and how we can configure the high availability. Okay, so till now we discussed about a container in runtime like Portman, Docker, Cryo. Yeah, Cryo is another container engine used with uh, Red Hat OpenShift. And Kubernetes for container orchestration and management. Of course, we need a, a operating system in the baseline. And HCD4, it's, it's, with, uh, it's working with the Kubernetes to store the cluster state and config. So in addition to this, in addition to this, what about if we get DevOps tools like API, Web Console, CLI, containerized services like authentication, networking, industry, runtimes, and paths? So the OpenShift is one of the examples for path as a service. So Java, Ruby, PHP, Node.js, runtimes, the OpenShift Kubernetes extensions. So what if if we get it all together as a bundle? That is called Red Hat OpenShift Container Platform. So in this platform, we have RHEL Core OS as a base operating system. It's specifically uh, designed for running as a, a, a base OS for container platform. Then container runtime, just like Portman Docker, there's another container runtime which is used in OpenShift that is Cryo, then Kubernetes, then additional tools provided by OpenShift. Okay, so I will explain. Uh, this is a scenario, developer is here, user is here. So where we are? Okay, we, uh, the cluster administrators, OpenShift administrators, administrators are responsible for managing this area. We'll write the code and push it into the feed. Then uh, OpenShift managers with a tool called S2I, source to image. Those who are familiar with the Docker file, uh, S2A is an alternative to Docker, Docker file because Docker files, to understand Docker file needs the syntax, which is used with Docker file and also Linux. But for S2A, it's specifically for developers, they don't need to understand what is Linux commands or uh, the Docker file concept. But that is only for developer, but we as a cluster administ administrators, we should know that what is Docker file and also S2A process. So just to explain what is happening here, so we are managing this OpenShift cluster here. The cluster is having image registry. Uh, I told earlier, the image registry stores the images which is required for creating the containers. So application developers create the code and keep in GitHub. From GitHub, S2I tool mix that code into images with respect to that application. So if it is a PHP, PHP build images are available in OpenShift cluster. So the S2A tool will combine together and will create a new image. It will keep an image registry. Using that image will create an application. That application can be accessed by the users. 
So this environment is managed by cluster administrators. In this case, OpenShift administrators. So if you move on to the next slide, I'll explain about S2I, that is code. So as a developer, write the code, build the image, then deploy the applications uh, in any of the uh, uh, Kubernetes cluster. So in this case, Red Hat OpenShift cluster. So code, build, and deploy using S2I image. So I will give you a demonstration based on this discussion because without demonstration, I think that this is not uh, not clear about uh, the concept. So I have the OpenShift cluster running here. I will log into that. Okay, so this is my Red Hat OpenShift container platform dashboard. The same scenario I'm going to demonstrate so I code in Git. I'm going to deploy an application, a PHP application, which says, hello, everyone, welcome to IPSR, PHP version. Okay, this is in Git, in my repository. So there is an option to launch an application from Git. So select from Git, then point to the URL, that is my Git URL, then select which builder image, that is PHP. So we don't need to worry about which builder, uh, where, where we can get the builder images. It's available here. Select which one you want to choose. Uh, of, of course, in Git, I have created multiple branches. So this is branch master. So that is important. I need to specify the branch here, Git reference master. And the context directory, PHP hello world. From where I can get that? See here, PHP hello world. So index.php belongs to PHP Hello World directory. Then image name, uh, PHP image, version 7.3, application name, uh, test IPSR. Test IPSR. Okay, so this is an application name, giving it as test. And while configuring, I can create a deployment config, which is something like a YAML file, which stores the information or requirements about uh, this application. Since in, in OpenShift or any one of uh, cluster management, this is considered as a declarative statement. So we are actually declaring, okay, how I need the system, in, in, in which way I need the system. So I'm declaring that I need a system with a PHP application, which serves the company. And automatically I can uh, ask the system to create a root to the application, root, nothing but a public URL. So once I create, so what is happening now? I have only the source code. I never created an image for this, right? So I have only the source code. Using this source code, I'm, I'm not, not me, I'm creating. The S2A process is creating an image Using that image, the OpenShift is deploying an application into the cluster. So if you click here, you can see the process, what is happening there. Uh, build is running, view logs. It's running. Push success. I'm back to the topology. Don't think that this is, uh, yeah, this is not a production deployment. Uh, this is a temporary setup, so resources are very less here. So you will get some delay here. Okay, now the application build is complete and root is here. You can click open URL here. See, hello, welcome to IPSR. PHP version is 7.3.11. So this I am publicly accessing. For testing from your side, I can copy paste this link in the chat box. Okay, so this is a public URL. So I don't need to worry about creating the URL or I need to, need to worry about finding the IP address of OpenShift automatically taking care about that. So the application is running here and how many ports are running in the background, there is only one. So that means only one, so just to understand, only one machine is running in the background. So I can increase one more, which is for load balancing. 
So I need everyone to access this application now because I need to test the load. So how many are in the group? Uh, the participant is how we have 59. So all, all of you try to access this because I need to test the load into this application. If load increases, I can increase the number of ports which is running in the background. So that means I can make sure that it is highly available and uh, and I can manually scalable, but auto scaling is something related to the code which we need to configure. Don't discuss about the course in the next slide. I think I can still access the page. There is no issue. And meanwhile, I will update the source code. Okay, so just imagine that you are you are all accessing the web page, and while so that is lively uh, available now. So I'm going to edit the code. I'm changing to welcome to IPSR webinar. Webinar on OpenShift. Okay, I'm editing the code OpenShift. Then applying commit changes here. Still, I can access my uh, website, but that modification is not updated here. So for that, I can place another build. Just click here, then actions. Where is that resource? Yeah, start a build here. So another build is in progress. So after that build, the updation will take an effect here. So still it is IPSR, but I know that the process is still happening. See the log here. Yeah, it's not at completed. Okay, successfully pushed, push successful. Going back to topology and I'm checking the status. Build is completed. Now, where is my URL? Very important thing, thing to understand is the URL not a changed, but uh, our application ports are changed. Welcome to IPSR webinar on OpenShift. So this way, this is like S2I. The developer will update the source code and inject into the OpenShift, will create another image, then create a new build. So this is something like a, a process called CICD, continuous integration and uh, continuous deployment. So developer, no need to take any help from other guys. Just developer change the code in the source, I mean, the Git, Git source code, then come back to here, then start another build. Uh, and if developer thinks that I need more resources, so this is something like resources, just increase the number of ports. What what if, if I delete any one of the port? Just think about that. I'm going to delete one of the port. Delete port. Still, I can guarantee that still your web server is accessible. Why? Because even though I deleted that, because of this replica, replica uh, uh, controller, replication controller, it automatically created the second one again. See, come back to here, the ports are still, two ports are still running. So here the number of ports, two means the desired number of ports. The OpenShift will make sure that always minimum of two ports are running for this application. If I want to increase, I can increase like that way. So three ports are running. So that means more resources are allocating into that application. So that means instead of 100 or 1000 or 10,000 or lakh, uh, customers can access this application. I just need to manually increase the number. But, uh, but as a part of one of the course like DO 280, we will discuss about how to configure auto scaling in the sense depends on the traffic. For example, if application CP utilization is above 80 percentage, launch another port. If that application utilization is below 20 percentage, decrease one port. Like that way we can configure. That is a part of automation. 
but that is possible. I just try to let you know that. So this is manual one, but I can guarantee that this application is highly available and scalable. So coming back to the, um, my slide presentation. Okay, till now we discussed about containers. What is containerization? Container, the limitations of container, which is overcome by Kubernetes, the orchestration engine. Then we discussed about OpenShift. It's a combination of container, any one of the container name, that is Cryo, then operating system, uh, CoreOS, then Kubernetes orchestration. In addition to that, that's some features offered by Red Hat. And Red Hat also offers some courses, which will help you, you guys to get skills on uh, creating containers, managing container uh, Kubernetes, and also how to operate a production Kubernetes cluster. So DO 180 is the initial level of course for Red Hat OpenShift, which is containers and Kubernetes, which will help you and manage containers for deployment on a Kubernetes and Red Hat OpenShift cluster. And the second level course is DO 280, which is more advanced. That is operating a production Kubernetes cluster teaches you to configure, troubleshoot, and manage Red Hat OpenShift cluster platform. This is a hands-on lab-based course which shows you to how to verify the successful installation of a cluster and manage it on a day-to-day -day basis, and of course the troubleshooting related topics as well. In order to understand these these two course syllabuses. The prerequisite is Linux knowledge. So for that, you can go for RHCSA, that is Red Hat System Administration, which will cover the core system administration task, which is need to understand uh, a real operating system. Yeah. So I can give you some related to DO 180. This is the syllabus, which is available Online. So I'll copy paste this syllabus link into the chat box. This is for okay. The first URL is DO one eighty. Okay, there is a seventy percent day discount on DO one eighty course, and you you have uh, access to chat box. Their educational content. So, if anything related to these courses, you'll get a. After this webinar, also you can come and uh, look into this link, and you can uh, get an interactive help from this the chat box. So, the outcome of this DO 180 course is uh, you should be able to manage containerization using Portman. To create images and direction to Red Hat OpenShift. So this is DO 180 course. In DO 280, I'll give you that link as well. The first link is DO 180, and second link is DO 280. So in continuation of DO 180, in DO 280, you will be getting uh, a deep knowledge of OpenShift cluster platform. Installation and update process, then troubleshooting to application deployment, how to configure users, role based access, then service and uh, container networking, then how to manage the port scheduling. Yeah, uh, the high availability and uh, auto scaling is concerned in that chapter. Then how to manage the limiting compute resources with applications, then scaling a cluster. So that is scaling a cluster. Both are different. Auto scaling application is the number of ports uh, running in a, running for an application. Scaling like cluster means number of nodes running for a cluster. Then finally, uh, monitoring cluster events and alerts. So this is DO 280 operating production Kubernetes cluster. Also, so these two links and syllabus syllabus also available here. If you click on this few full course syllabus, you'll get the, you'll get the full course syllabus of DO 180 and 280. So just bookmark these two links for DO 180 and 280. 
Yep, that's it from my side. Thank you.